Okay, you could start. Okay, hello GM. This is the week one podcast of the brand new season, 2019 season. We welcome Dave Gridiron Grudge Match. How are you doing tonight, Dave? I'm doing very well. All right, first off, you just see the six, the six shooters holding off a late Monday night rally. How does defeating Sal for the second year in a row Deal, deal to you. Oh, it's always good to beat uh, to beat the six shooters. Uh, it's well documented. He's beaten me 46 times, the most by any GM in league history. He's blown me out many times. So it always feels good to beat my uh, bitter division rival and get a leg up on him early in the season. Yes. <clears throat> you and the six shooters had a classic matchup this past week. Moving on, he took... Tom Brady in the fourth round, and then on your reverse in the fifth, you took Harrison Butker, the kicker. Was that planned, or just right place, right time? I was uh, studying my kicker weakness for about two and a half hours, three or four days before the draft. Went back a couple of years. Uh, since 2011 or 12. I finished seventh out of eight GMs and kicker fantasy points. So that was a weakness that I had to address. 2016, I drafted a kicker in the fifth round. Guskowski did well. If you want the best players, you have to get the best players a little bit earlier than expected. And if I'm correct, other than the quarterback position, the kicker has the most points on anybody's fantasy team at the end of the year. So having a valuable kicker on a great offense is a difference maker. And obviously in week one, I outscored the six shooters 16-4, to four, so I've gotten off to a good start so far with my controversial kicker pick in round five. Well, I wouldn't call it controversial. Uh, surprising, yes, but not controversial, but yes, he definitely helped you secure the victory this past week. Okay. Oh, just one thing before I have to cut you off. You asked about Brady. Brady, with no Gronk, is everybody's off everybody's radar. Everybody was reading about it. But Brady is a very dependable, consistent offense. The Patriots have been in the top ten in scoring seven or eight years in a row. And... To, to bypass Brady for some other quarterbacks that were drafted ahead of him, a Winston, a Mayfield, uh, I've always believed you have to minimize your risk, and I've been guilty of drafting bonehead quarterbacks early that didn't pan out. So I'm not going to make the same mistake twice and not picking a Breeze or a Brady if they're still there. And obviously these guys can still produce. Very true, very true. Okay, next up has the G-Men, who is still singing from uh, a week one loss to the Reapers and losing in the Super Bowl last year. Do you think he had how much motivation do you have to send him to 0-2? Oh, G-Men, uh, I spoke to him early today, and I totally ripped him. That was the most ridiculous start and non-start I've ever seen. Well, one of the top ones. You're playing against the worst team in the NFL, who's going to be the worst team. They're probably going to get the number one pick. Brady and the Patriots own the Steelers. Roethlisberger is average on the road and even worse against Brady in New England. With no Bell, no Brown, you have, you have nothing to lose by starting Lamar Jackson. He had, you, all he had to do was hit start. You can look at any other fantasy website. It said start Lamar, start Lamar, start Lamar. But obviously Matt at times doesn't do any research, I believe. And if he's ever going to be a champion in the next 15 years, he's better start doing some research and uh, stop, you know, yesing people to death that he does. And I don't really care what he says, but he totally missed the ball on that one. Totally dropped it. Now this is the part of the podcast where you have any parting shots for a single GM, the entire league, 
or just want to get something off your chest, now's the time to do it. Oh, of course. You know, you know, it's 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 the parting shots, and you know, there's uh three of the four wins came from the East Division. The best the East Division came up with, I think, was forty. Uh, the West Division came up with forty nine points. The champions coming out of the East. I'm saying it. I'm the first GM to have Breeze and Brady. I might open up a bed and breakfast in New England again. Uh, it's first time ever that's happened. Uh. You know, somebody made me a trade offer. I'm not taking it. Pick up the phone. Just make it, just let it be known right now. I am not trading with anybody. Never trading with anybody. I don't care if my team has 12,000 injuries. I can fix it on the free agent wire. And I have a great team. I know it. Doug knows it. The commissioner even said it, slash six shooters. I've asked people at work. I have a great team. Now, is this great team going to do something in the playoffs? Who knows? But I'm putting myself in a position to win. I do my research. Like I told you guys at the bar, I research the Jets on a Saturday night where everybody else is hanging out with the girlfriend or the wife, giving them a kiss or two, taking them out to dinner, whatever. I saw it. You got to do the research. Put the work in. You can't just go on there and pick players, old names. It's young and fast league. So if you're not ready to prepare yourself to win each week and take chances, <clears throat> Matt, then you're not going to win. All right. Very, very right to the point, as always, the Greg Maps. That's why we, we love having you in this league. Okay, now, Greg, let's one more time. For other GMs out there, what do they have to do to get on this podcast? Well, first of all, you got to start the right players. Second of all, you got to score points. You got to be explosive. You got to have explosive players on explosive offenses. And tomorrow night at seven o'clock, the grudge match, grudge match might add another explosive player. He might wait till Sunday. He might do it on Thursday. But I already know three or four players I'm going to grab already. And it's already Tuesday at 8 o'clock. So that's the way it is in the league. You can't score 40, 45. You just got to score 50, 60 points to win every week. So do your homework, trust your draft, and be aggressive when you got to. All right. All right, Dave. Well, thanks for being with us tonight. Um, enjoy your week. Uh, we'll see what happens at what free agency. Kicks off at 7 o'clock tomorrow. It should be fast and furious. Best his finger. And once again, uh, you are still hosting week five. Is that still in the books? That is true. I'll be over at the Comac Crush new facility, $2.5 billion facility just built last year. Miller's Ale House in Comac, week five. So start making plans. Uh, Grim Reapers is hosting week nine. Pick a week. Go to a sports bar, have it at your house, red zone, let's get the food going, cheese doodles. This is going to be a great year, year 28 fantasy football. So everybody saw how much fun it was on week one. You can't replace that. You can't replace that. There's nothing better than watching it live with your, with your buddies in the league. Absolutely. Amen, brother. All right, Grudge Match, thank you for joining us tonight. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you.